Hi, I'm Shay Finney, a fifth grade teacher at Phoenix Pre-K 8. Today you're going to see an experiment about how sound travels through different media types. Students will investigate how sound can travel through solids, liquids, and gases, as well as do a video lab session to find out how sound travels in a vacuum or outer space. So, hope you enjoy. All right, so let's talk about sound. Can anyone give us a reminder? Can anyone give us a reminder of what sound is? Maybe what causes or creates sound? Something like that? Vibrations cause sound. Very good. And then sound is also a form of something. Any ideas? Sound is a form of energy. And it travels in a special way. There's a question, I think, on the quiz that says, sound travels in vans. No, that's silly. What does sound travel in? It does travel as a wave. Very good. So we're going to spend some time talking about not only the waves, but also what types of materials that sound can travel through. And um, we know that there's different types of matter. Dante, can you pick someone to tell us, what are the types of matter we've learned about or talked about so far this year? Solids, liquids, and gases, we know that all matter is made up of atoms and that those atoms are um, differently located. Some of them are closely packed together, some of them are spread out, um, but everything is made of matter. So we're going to spend some time today talking about how does sound travel through different types of matter. Um, there's a special word for that called media or mediums. Um, so they don't mean medium like the size between a small and a big. They mean mediums like solids, liquids, and gases, things like that. So we're going to do an investigation about how sound travels. We're going to look at how sound can travel through the air and how sound can travel through water. When I say air, which of the media types is that, a solid, liquid, or a gas? Yes, air is an example of a gas. And when I say water, what type is that, a solid, a liquid, or a gas? That's a liquid. So we're actually going to do three investigations today, sound through air, gases, sound through water, liquids, and sound through solids. So can sounds travel through liquids? Can sounds travel through the air? And how is sound different when it's heard through the air or through the water? Let's take a vote. Thumbs up or thumbs down. Can sound travel through liquids? If your thumb is up, why do you think so? Give me an example of when you might have experienced this. Whale sounds. You hear this, heard the sounds of the whales and how they kind of communicate with one another. Yeah, whales can actually use very low frequency sounds that can travel really, really far distances. Um, elephants can too. Any other examples? Maybe something you've experienced. Thank you, Ashlyn. Any other examples? She could hear the sounds of the dolphins making noises underneath the water. How do dolphins use sound? How do they use sound? To communicate? To communicate? Yeah, they can communicate, but they also use it for a very special purpose. Starts with a D. What is echolocation? He's got it. He's got it. It's not communicating. It has to do with echoes and locating things. Echo location. You want to try again or ask for help? Oh, it's to locate. To locate what? What would a dolphin want to locate? Food. Very good. Food, predators, things like that. So humans use sound in lots of different ways. Animals use sound in different ways. We think that sound can travel through liquids. What about air? Thumbs. Yes. How can you hear me talking right now? The sound must be traveling through the air. So today we're going to make some connections about how it travels through liquids, how it travels through the air, um, as well as is one of them going to travel better or worse, you know, right? That type of thing. Um, so we're going to be doing two different investigations. I'm sorry, that's not true. We're going to do all three at the same time. But I think this one is the most difficult for students to understand. So let's start with sound through the air. 
It says we're going to use our tuning forks. And I know we spent some time looking at tuning forks Monday. Today's Wednesday. <coughs> so there's three sets of tuning forks back here. A set of tuning forks is going to have this, and it's going to have the wooden block. I know it says hit against your shoe. We're not touching our shoes with the tuning forks. Instead, you strike it on one time. This is the time, the one side. So don't strike both, strike one. So what you're going to do is strike it and listen. Then, with a partner, you're going to strike it and put it into the end of the tube. Look at your picture on the screen. One person is going to strike it and put it on the end of the tube. What's the other person going to do? Listen. Hold it up to their ear and listen to it. So you're going to compare. How did it sound when you struck it? And then how did you compare when you struck it and put it inside the tube and listened? Make sense? So there's three sets. That means six people can work at a time back here. What about sound through water? We're going to be using stethoscopes to amplify the sound. We talked about amplitude. I told you my brother plays bass guitar, and he uses an amp to make the sound louder. Not higher, louder. So we're going to use stethoscopes. What are stethoscopes used for? Keep it cute. To look at things up close, that's a microscope. What about a stethoscope? Stethoscope is, um, it's, like, it's like things that doctors, like they use like for your heart. Very good. So doctors can use a stethoscope to listen to your heartbeat. Um, right now, if I tried to put my ear against um, like Benjamin's chest or something like that, I could probably hear his heartbeat a little bit. So this is a tool, and it's used so that we can hear things a little bit louder. It's going to amplify our sound. So what are you going to do? What you're going to do is you're going to take one of these containers of water and you're going to clap your fingers show me underneath the water and listen tap your fingers underneath the water and listen without a stethoscope got it then you're going to put the stethoscope in your ears and then you're going to put the other receiving end of the stethoscope under water and you're going to tap your fingers in front of the stethoscope am i tapping the stethoscope yeah. No, this is very sensitive. It's easy to break and dislocate. So I wouldn't tap that. But you can hold this underwater and tap your fingers underwater to listen. So you're going to listen um, without the stethoscope, then listen with the stethoscope. Make sense? Um, I know that you might feel a little bit hesitant about putting it in your ears. That's what the alcohol is for. So what you'll do is I'll make sure that all of them have been cleaned before we start. I haven't cleaned them yet because I want to clean them right now before we hand them to you. Make sense? So we'll clean them. Then after you're done, you'll take a cotton ball, you'll put it in the alcohol, you'll clean the ears, you'll put this cotton ball that's used in the trash can. Make sense? So everybody will clean them. I'll clean them before we start, but everybody will clean them after you use them. Make sense? OK. So we talked about air. We talked about water. How can we test how sound travels through solids? You're actually going to do that at your desk. What you're going to do is take a tissue and lay it on one side of your desk. You're going to put your ear on top of the tissue. Then you're going to ask a friend or someone else in the class to tap the other side of the table without you looking. And you're going to see if you can hear that sound that they're making. Got it? So should you put your ear on the table? No. no. Take a tissue. Should you put your ear on the tissue? Mm -hmm. Yes. Then what do you do with your tissue when you're done? Throw it away. Yeah, you're going to throw that away. Any questions for me about what you're supposed to do? No. no. So let's get our sheet set up. Let's take a look at our sheet. And it says, focus question, can sound travel through all kinds of matter or mediums? And then we said, what are mediums? Those are solids, liquids, gases. And then we'll even talk about outer space, if sound can travel in outer space. And then we'll answer what it can and can't travel through, what it travels best through, things like that. So what can you do in the boxes where it says solid? Which one is that? Which one? The tissue. The tissue, the desk, right? You can write down what happened. What's the liquids? The water. The water. You can write down what happened. What's gases? The tubes. You can write down what happened. 
So for the most part, you're working with a partner. The stethoscope is by yourself. So you can just kind of have free range and do your thing. Got it? I do want you to leave a space. No, that's fine. You can write down what happened here, and then we can do my last part right here. All right. I'm going to give you 10 minutes. If six people are back there, can you go back there? Yeah. That's too many. You can do the desk or you can do the stethoscopes. We have four stethoscopes. So how many people can do stethoscopes at a time? Four. four. Eight. It's one. It, it's one stethoscope. So you're not going, here, what's yours? That's not what's happening. Okay? Any other questions? Okay. I'm going to do 10 minutes on the clock. Sorry, this one's got rust because I guess we put it wet back in the bag. These are from the sponge. There you go. And this one is clean. All right, we have four stethoscopes going. Go find a partner. You got people standing there that are willing to work with you. Najee, I'm gonna hop behind you real quick and throw this in the trash. What does it sound like? It sounds like a beating? Better or worse with the stuff still? So try to tap outside the water, tap underwater, compare. It sounds loud, but he's not tapping very loud, so why do you think it sounds loud to you? Think about it. That's a solid. So go ahead and draw it so you can get started. Oh, you can hear that. That's not like, like it sounds like a bell. Really? Yeah. Then you get so cute. It sounds like a bell. I didn't hear it. It's just so solid. So it sounds like a bell. I heard it. So like an echo. Other times. I do. Other side. Other side. Other side. Okay, there isn't. She has it. Oh, that's my notebook. All right, here. You can borrow this one. Go ahead. So, hey guys, let's pick up the block, pick up the tuning fork. You can space yourselves out. Okay, one at a time. Come on over. Tap one at a time. One. Nope. One. There you go. Did you hear it? Now, tap again and put it in the tube. Did it change? Yes. No, no, don't tell him. Now switch. Did you hear it? Tissues. Did you hear it? What? What? Are you hard? Stethoscope. What did it sound like? Did you hear it? Whoa, I saw her make a face. All right, switch. Let Chloe try. I don't know, which one did you do? Is the door locked? Okay, let me unlock. That's through the air. Yes, gas is a type of air. Or air is a type of gas. You're right. It sounds the same? Let's try that again. All right. Listen. Now listen. Do they sound the same? No, I did try it with the headlight. No, well, not really. So, the same or not the same? What do you think? It was not the same? What's different? The fact that um, when you tapped with your nails, it was like lighter. It was like a lighter I tapped sound. with my nail both times. 
So it's not something I did that was different, it's something that you did was different. What was different that you did? I have no idea. Well, you were listening up here in the air, and then you were listening to the table. So something was different. Okay. Now give him a try. Put it up against your ear. Strike it. Let him listen. Okay. You're going you're gonna to dip this. You got to do the wood block. See how this is all banged up? Okay. You ready? So we're testing out solids, liquids, and gases. You want to do the gases first? Okay. So put it against your ear. And listen. The same or different? Different? How? You heard the air? Heard the air. Maybe it had something to do with your vibration. Maybe. What was loud? Was it loud outside the tube or was it loud inside the tube? Why? Why? You're right, you could hear it better. Why? Why would you hear it better if it was in the tube? We haven't done that one yet, because we're not in outer space, we're on Earth. So we'll have to talk about that one later. All right, thank you. Let's talk about it. Um, I think most of us are finished, but if you're not finished, that's okay, because we are going to share our data with each other. Um, also, I noticed that one of the membranes for the stethoscope is missing. There should be a white membrane on the front. One of them is missing, so we need to locate that as soon as we're done. If you took it off on accident, that's fine. We just need to give it back. Okay, let's turn off that light next to the door again and fill in our data. It says matter and medium type. How does the sound travel? So solids, which one was that? The desk, the stethoscope, or the tube? The desk. So when you tapped and listened, and when you put your ear to the desk and tapped and listened, what happened? Okay, so let's put that it got louder on the table or through the table or next to the table. Thumbs if you agree. That's what happened with you too. It got louder. Has anyone ever seen someone like put their ear down to the ground or down to an object? Has anyone ever seen that before? Yeah. Give us an example. So putting the ear against the wall, and that made it easier for them to hear, right? What about, I think I've seen where they put their ear against the railroad track. Has anybody ever seen that? And what were they trying to do? Here if the train is coming, because it'd be easier, right, to listen against that solid material. Okay, what about the liquid stethoscope people? What happened when you tapped and listened, and then you tapped underwater and listened? What happened? Okay, so when you were outside the water, this didn't sound like anything. Everybody listen. Yeah, I can't even hear it, it's me doing it. But underneath the water, who could hear it better? Yeah, okay, so let's put down, we could hear the tapping better through the water. Absolutely, that's what happened with me. Uh, was anybody, was this their first time using a stethoscope? A few people first time, okay. Um, and then gases, that was through the tube. So what happened when you struck and listened in the regular air and then you struck and put it in the tube? Now, I saw a couple people putting it on the tube. Is the tube the air? 
No, the tube's made of paper, that's a solid. So you had to make sure you put it in the tube, the air, not on the paper. What happened? Both times, or only outside, or only in the tube? Only in the tube. Okay, who thinks it was better outside the tube? Who thinks it was better in the tube? So when you put the tuning fork in the tube, it was able, you were able to hear it better? Yes. Why? So to hear better in the tube. So she said, instead of when we struck it and the sound went everywhere, the sound was stuck in the tube. So it just traveled through the tube, so it was able to travel better. Thoughts? I couldn't have said it better myself. So before we answer this part, what sound travels the best through, what sound travels the worst through, let's do a quick review of what do these molecules and atoms look like? Solid. Liquid. Gas. What do the molecules in a solid look like? Yeah, they're tight and packed close together. So what do you think happens when sound hits a solid? Is it easy to travel through? No, yes. I've got some yeses over here. Well, sounds is vibrations. They bump into each other. Would it be easy for sound to bump into something that's closely packed together? If something's close together, it's not going to be easy to bump into each other. All right, let's talk about it. If you were in a room with three people, would it be easy to bump into those three? No. If you were in a room with 30 people, would it be easy to bump into someone? If you were in the room with 300 people, would it be easy to bump into someone? Yeah. yeah. So if you get more packed together, it's going to be easy for those sounds to bump into each other. So we're going to say that sound travels best through solids. Why? Because they're close together. Thank you, Chloe, with a C. Because atoms are close. Atoms are packed. Atoms are tight together. That's what we can say is our reason. All right. What about in a liquid? How do those atoms look? They're kind of spaced out. They're a little bit looser. Were you able to hear under the water? Yeah. yeah. You were able to hear. Have you ever uh, been under the pool and there was music playing and you could hear the music playing or someone was, or you yell underwater when you're in the bathtub and you can kind of hear? Yeah, so sound is able to travel through the liquid, but do you think it's as easy for them to bump into each other? No. Not as easy as a solid, because they're a little bit more spaced out. What about a gas? What do they look like? Yeah, they're very far out, very spaced apart. So out of these three, really packed tight together, a little bit looser, very spread out. What do you think sound's going to travel the worst through? Gas. Yeah, it's going to travel the worst through a gas. That's why when you struck the tuning fork in the air, you barely heard it. But when you put it in the tube and the air was packed together, like Chloe said, it was much easier to hear. So why does it travel the worst through the gas? Because the atoms are far apart. They're very spread out. So because they're so far away from each other, it's just going to be way more difficult. Sorry, this is a little light. Let me make it darker. Is that better? OK. So then. The last one we said was the vacuum. Do they mean Hoover? Vacuum. Anyone? Yes, ma'am. 
No. They mean outer space. So when you watch those Star Wars space Trek. Is it space Trek? That's no, not Star right. Trek. Star Trek. Thank you, Zayn. When you watch those and you see the explosion, boom, crash. Can we hear those things? Or like if a meteorite going past us or a comet, can we hear that? No. Or if there's a, a burst of a solar flare, can we hear that? No. no. Why not? Why not? We can't hear it. Those space shows are making it up. Why can't we hear it? Because it's too far away from us. Not because it's too far away. Not because it's too far. There's no air. There's nothing to vibrate. What causes sound? Vibration. So if there's nothing to vibrate, there's no sound. That's why. So we can put sound cannot travel through space because there's no matter to vibrate. There's nothing to vibrate. There's no matter. So then, yeah, we're not going to hear anything. All right, let's test this out. There's a guy at a university that tried to test this experiment out. What did he do? He took an alarm clock and he set it off. So what are you going to hear? A ringing sound, right? But then he puts in a special device called a bell jar and then he vacuums out all the air. So if he takes all the air away and there's nothing to vibrate, what do you think is gonna happen to your sound? Let's watch. This is a really fancy experiment. Ms. Finney doesn't have this kind of cool equipment. and I'm here in our Global Technology Centre in the UK to demonstrate that sand doesn't travel in a vacuum. I've got a vacuum pump, a bell jar, an alarm, and a microphone to demonstrate that the sound level will drop in a vacuum. So, let's set up the experiment. I'm going to place our radio microphone into the bell jar and set our alarm. When the alarm goes off, you'll hear it, it'll be very loud. Okay, I think I can just about hear that, but can you'll you hear be able it? to see on your screen a visualization of how loud it is. Yeah. So I'm going to suck out the air from this bell jam, close this valve so that the air can't get in, and open this valve to allow our vacuum pump to suck out the air. He's going to take the air out, make it like outer space. Keep listening. The air is being sucked out now, and you should see the sound level dropping on the microphone. So you can see our gauge. Do you hear it ringing anymore? And also I hear the vacuum, the but I don't hear the alarm. Dropped. That's because a sound source vibrates and that pushes the air and transfers the vibration to you hearing it. But because there's no air in our vacuum, the alarm is vibrating, but it can't transfer that to the microphone. So I'm going to do the reverse now. I'm going to shut this valve and then open this valve. I'm going to put the air back. What's going to happen? So the air's back in now, and the microphone's picking yeah. up the sound, and I can just about hear it as well. So that's been our experiment. We've proved that sound cannot travel in a vacuum. If you are going to replicate this experiment, please have an adult present. Thanks for watching. Cool. So even though we're not on the International Space Center, we're not in outer space, he was able to create this experiment to show what would it really be like in outer space. So the next time you watch one of those space movies and they go, boom, crash, boom, and the other spaceship blows up and they go, wow, and they hear it, is that true? No. No, they're adding in special effects to make it sound, sound more interesting. All right. So looking at our notes one more time, what can we say about outer space in a vacuum? What should be put in this box? What happened in the experiment in the video? No 
vibration, no sound. Couldn't have said it better myself. No vibration equals no sound. Nice. So can sound travel through all kinds of mediums? Yeah, it can travel best through solids. It travels the worst or the slowest through gases. It cannot travel through outer space, and it has to do with how the molecules and atoms are packed together. Any questions for me? No. Okay, cool.